you got some that ain't sick and they ain't shut in. The only reason they shut in is because they don't want to get out. After all, it's too cold. And uh, 
I've always wondered, why is it too cold to come to church, but it ain't too cold to go anywhere else you want to go? I mean, you know, think about it. People say, well, it's too cold, and I, I don't feel like putting my clothes on. I don't feel like getting up and getting ready. Well, you sure get up and get ready for something out there you want to do in the world? You'll go to the shopping centers. You'll go to the whatever. I can remember myself that, but I just say, well, you know, you do what you want to. And I'm a firm believer in that. I'm here tonight because I wanted to come. Amen. I'm here tonight not only because I wanted to come, because I love my Lord. Sure enough. And he loved me enough to save my soul. That's the reason I'm here tonight. Not because I'm pastoring the church. Not because of anything else. I'm here tonight because, praise God, he loved me and I love him. Yes, Lord. Amen. So tonight we want to go to the Lord in prayer and trust God to answer your prayer. As I was telling them in prayer, no matter what we go. I believe we ought to all have a special prayer for our president. Because right now, God bless him. was trying to feed him to the Sure enough. And brother, we better pray for him. God says pray for those in leadership over there. Whether it's in church, uh, in a, not in a world, whatever. Pray for them that's in authority over you. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Sure enough. And, uh, so let's pray for our president. <coughs> God help him in decisions. And he knows if he, if he lets down on the border <coughs> security for this country, he might as well step down from being president. Because mm -hmm. I mean to tell you, it, it's, that's just that serious. Our country, if God don't intervene, we're fixing to see something if God lets us live a few more weeks. That's on the line. Because yeah. the devil is trying his best to infiltrate America. And so, uh, anyhow, I've always, I'll say this tonight, the Trojan is in the White House. It's in, the, in our Congress. Y'all know what I meant when I said that? <coughs> I mean, brother, you've already got two of them up there that's voted in as senators and congressmen, and they're full of pledge. Wouldn't even take the oath on our Bible. But Charlie, I'm gonna tell you something, brother, Mr. Deacon. Anybody that can't take the oath on Help America now. to serve America and be with America and be what they ought to be, and can't take their oath on the Word of God, the Bible, our Bible, not the Quran, not some Help other. Help now. Bible, they ain't got no business holding that office. Amen. Amen. Right. I know we got freedom of religion, but bless God, we ain't got freedom of false cults. But I'll tell you right now, some people say, well, that's their religion, that's their right. Yeah, what you gonna do? Well, bless God, when they declare, force it down your throat. Help yep. now. We come to church tonight because we had we had a will to come here. We had a freedom to come here. It's our right to come here. But brother, when you take your rights and your freedom away from you, you're going to hear a whole lot of trouble. Oh, that can't never happen here. Unless God they have them other third world countries. Sure take their Bibles and pile them up in the street and burn them. Uh -huh. And brother, I'm telling you, don't you say you can't come here. God said every nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. Sure enough. And you open the door up for the devil to come in, don't you think he won't? That's right. right. Yeah. Some, some, somebody said on in that uh, just a couple of days ago said somebody over jumped over the wall at Nancy Pelosi's house and brought some illegals want to hit, put them up in the wall scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, let's pray to God bless you. Amen. I'm telling you, God, God help our nation. I pray for our president. He needs our prayers. And uh, I believe as I stand here behind this desk tonight that he is appointed by God to protect our country. Sure enough. And help our country. Because look what he's done in the past two years he's been in office. It's amazing. Yeah. At least he ain't sold it out, has he? Sure That's right. Yes, yeah, Lord. I've never known a president in my whole years of being here that donated his whole year's salary for the benefit of this country. That's Most right. times are taking everything and getting more. Sure enough. <clears throat> Anyhow, let's pray. Anybody got a special request tonight you want to make? Sister Sandy, go ahead. Um, keep Michael in your prayers. He's still sick. And keep my mom in your prayers. I'll take her tomorrow to find out if or what kind of treatments they're going to do for her cancer. And my neighbor had to be rushed to the hospital the other night because of her cancer. Keep her in your prayers. Let's remember this request. Somebody else. If you just remember Brother Neil, he, uh, he's in Shannon Gray now, so... Uh, if anybody wants to go see him there? From the, they What's the name of that place, Brother Jim? Shannon, Shannon Gray. Gray. Shannon Gray. Shannon Gray. Shannon Gray. Yeah. You just well, uh, Scientific Avenue. Uh, yeah. Sister Judy was over there for rehabilitation. Okay. And Sister Ima Jean was over there. Same place they was at. 
You get with Nancy, she'll give you the code or whatever you need to go to go see him. Yeah. Remember, she remember, both me and she remember Betty, she's there. having trouble breathing here for some reason. Sister Betty? She's just having trouble breathing here for some reason. They don't okay. know why. You're talking about Reverend Davis Watt, then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's remember Betty Jane. I want to make sure I have the right lady in my life. <laughs> remember my sister Betty, because she's, she's in terrible, she's in the first stage of Alzheimer's and it's not good, so let's pray for her. That's my baby sister. And so, anybody else got a special request? Sister Robin? Yes, my grandson, uh, Brantley, he's going to have dental surgery on Friday and they're going to put him under, so remember him. He's never been put under before. And um, I have one more. Uh, Ronnie down here at Pierce Ministries, he passed away uh, down here beside Lowe's Pudi. Uh, remember his wife, Alice, and their family. Amen. Yeah, remember them. He passed away. Mavis and Papa Johnny in our prayers. Everybody else. Knows. All the hearts clear of request. Everybody got a body up in their hand. So we honestly, this is your prayer request. Oh, Heavenly Father, 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 God bless us all service, bless the Lord God. God bless you in our praise. Give her every strength, courage, and grace. God, I pray for each of you, Brother Neil. God bless Sister Nancy. Bless Sister John and Jean, Brother Claude. God, I pray for Brother Aaron, Sister Linda. I pray for Sister Judy tonight, God. God, we pray for these special requests, God. I pray that you'd ask them for any precious weeks. God bless our nation. I pray for our president, God, that you'd help him, Father. God, I pray that you'd keep him for our country, Father. God, I pray that you'd bless the peace of Israel, Father. I pray for Naomi and for Johnny Hooker. God, I pray that you'd be with Wayne, Darlene, and Kenna. God, many others out there that's lost. Bless you, Father. God, we pray for so many. God, it's out of your precious will. God, be with those that's not with us tonight. God, we pray for sickness, for the purposes. God, you understand. And God, we'll glorify you and we'll praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's all stand and us is coming. Let's take up our offer tonight. Bless the Lord Jesus. Well 
Jesus. Oh, 
sing it, but uh, I just want, you know, this song is very special, and, uh, you know, if it wasn't for the blood, you know, none of us would be here today. That's right, that's right. right. If, uh, if, if Jesus hadn't come down and shed his blood, neither one, none of us would have had a chance. That's right. We would have been just like all of us. So, so y'all just remember, you know, all my lost loved ones. Remember uh, my family, you know. You got a very special prayer request that God knows all about. God's uh, working it out, brother, yes. He's going to work it out. He's going to take care of it. <coughs> Y'all just remember that. Yes. Yes. Oh, 
Let's go home. <laughs> Woo, glory! Yeah. Well, tonight, uh, I want to speak on something that's not too popular in our pulpit today. Uh, a lot of people don't want to hear it. But I got news for you, church. It's Bible. It's Bible. I hear preachers on uh, television. They'll preach on love, and that's okay. Because love is God. God is love. But I got news for you. The object from love is what? S I N. And they, you know, everybody wants to hear something about love. Love the Lord with all your heart. Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's good. That's all Bible. I believe it. I believe that's the way we ought to be as Christians. And I'll pick out me and my select poor no more. That ain't, that's not what God's talking about. But over in the book of uh, Romans and chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, uh, you know, the subject tonight is, it's not going to be love. It's not going to be uh, a lot of the things I can name my tongue to. But the subject tonight is going to be that little three-letter word. S-I-E. Because you see, sin is a transgression against the law of God. And we that are saved by the grace of God should have no desire whatsoever to transgress the law of God. Now, I'm not talking about Ten Commandments. I'm talking about from Genesis to Revelation, the Word of God. So you see... If there's something inside of you that always has to go contrary to the Word of God regardless of what, you know, something's wrong. That should not be. 
It's all right here in the Word of God in this chapter, chapter 6. And God bless His precious Word tonight. It says here in chapter 6 and verses 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now, I believe God's grace is sufficient for whatever comes our way. Uh, whether it be sickness or whether it be some kind of physical ailment, or whatever. Uh, you know, Apostle Paul went before the Lord and said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this storm be taken away from me. But see, in all of his prayers, God didn't take it away. But he did tell him that my grace is sufficient. And I got news for you tonight, church. God's grace is sufficient for our lives one day at a time. Amen. There's nowhere in this Bible that God says you have to sin in order to live a day's life. God says uh, flee from the very appearance of evil. Flee from the very appearance of sin. And sin is transgression against this Bible. Now I'm going to tell you something. It's like I said, if you have a desire to just keep on out in the world and going against this book, you better check out, bless God, and see what's wrong with you. Amen. See if you've got the right goods or not. Because you see, when you're saved, and you're walking in fellowship with God, and you're walking in fellowship with your brothers and sisters, you don't have a desire to go out here and mingle and act and do like this ungodly world. And brother, listen to what Paul said. Shall we continue, in, what shall we say to these then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul said, God says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead and do sin uh, live any longer therein? You don't. You don't want to. Uh, you don't. You don't want to. It's just not a desire in a Christian heart to go out here and just continuously live in, in sin. If you've got to go out here and uh, drink a little liquor, do a little whatever you want to do away from the church, and get out with the crowd that's wanting to go to the world and do the world's thing, after all, uh, it ain't the preacher's business. No, it ain't my business. But I'll tell you one thing. When I see you bring a reproach up on this church and up on the, the, what this church stands for, it becomes my business. Right. It becomes the deacon business. It becomes our church business. Because this is our church. Yeah. And anything the devil tries to use to bring reproach upon his church, it becomes the church's business. And don't forget it. Amen. Third verse says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death. Brother, when you went out and got saved, you were baptized in the Spirit of God. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Brother, you received the Spirit of God into your heart and soul right then. But when you went out to the water hole and got baptized, that, listen, that didn't add a thing to your salvation. That didn't add nothing. That just showed to the world that you was willing to die out to the world. And that's what a lot of us ain't willing to do. We're not willing to die out to the world. We want to hold on to God with one hand, hold on to the church with one hand, and bless God get out in the world and hold on to the world with the other hand. It don't work that way. If that's your desire and that's your will to live like that, you need to change it. It's imposed. Yeah. Therefore, we are buried with him, the fourth verse, by baptism unto, the, unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Right Brother, let me tell you something. Do you understand how, what happened when Jesus was baptized in the river of Jordan? He was this God Almighty manifested in flesh. But we call ourselves Christians. We want to follow him in the baptism of the water. That's not showing us that we're washing away our sins. There ain't enough of water inside of heaven to wash your sins away. If it was that way, then Jesus would not have had to die on the cross. But listen here. Water won't wash your sins away. Brother, but the baptism is just a picture to show this ungodly world, show the world that you're willing to be baptized, which represents the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you come up out of that water, that means that you're showing the world that you're willing, and by the grace of God, you're going to walk and talk and act like a Christian. Bless God. And that's what so many Baptists have already done for God. 
They want to go through the religious motions. They want to do the religious act, but they don't want to live faithful and dedicated to show God that they love Him. For if we have been planted together in His likeness of His death, we should also in the likeness of the, uh, we should also be in the likeness of His resurrection. So you see, here it is. Here's the picture. He died on Calvary. He took, he took off of Calvary and put in the bar tomb. And the third day, he was raised up. And you see, there's a picture of the death, the burial, the resurrection. There's a picture of the baptism right there. That's no more. Brother, we call ourselves Christians. Let's walk like Christ. Yeah. Let's talk like Christ. And let's don't let the devil have way in our voice and our, what we say and what we do. Give, if they don't give glory to God, don't do it and don't say it. Amen. Thank you, Bob. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Brother, listen, Paul said I died daily. You can't die out on Sunday morning. If you do, you wait waiting too late. You come to church in feel like a dog. Because you didn't die out through the week, you come to church that well, I'll just die out Sunday morning and go to show my religious activities and I'll be all right. No, bless God, that ain't what Paul's talking about here. Because knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now that's what he's talking about. Brother, we're supposed to die out to this ungodly world. Well, if it takes this world and the pleasure of this world to satisfy your longing and keep you going, something's wrong with what you've got in this girl. I'm not saying it's wrong to go on vacation. I think everybody can go on vacation once in a while and enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. Like our ladies fishing, get off up to Amish country. That's nothing wrong with them. Because you see, they're faithful in the house of God when they're home. <coughs> they're faithful to the things of God. But do I got a problem, bless God, with well, that and it says I love the church and I love God and every weekend A.L. Fachon or somewhere in the world is still in the house of God. Amen. Amen, Amen Deacon. Amen. <laughs> you too, Brother Taylor. <laughs> yes. David, we won't leave you out. <laughs> Seventh verse going down. For he that is dead is free from sin. What does that mean? I don't mean him out there in the dead cemetery. That ain't what that's talking about. That's talking about him that's dead to the things of this ungodly world. Him that is dead to the world. Died daily. Paul said, I died daily. That the preeminence of Christ would be lifted up and show forth in my life. Amen. I died daily. You can't die once a week. You got to die daily. Every morning I get up, I let the flesh know. I let the world know. I let the devil know. Honey, it's God first. <laughs> Pray evidence of God first. Yes. When I look in the mirror, I don't want to look at it. I see my worst enemy. And you do too, whether you want to admit it or not. Because the Bible says in this flesh dwelleth no good thing, but right. in the, the heart dwelleth Jesus. Right. He's great. He's, he's the best thing that ever happened to Amen. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Now, how in the name of God is people going to believe they're going to live with him and they can't die out to sin? Right. They can't die out to the world. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man loveth the world, the love of God is not in him. You better listen. Nothing more. You separate yourself. You see, preaching don't separate you. You separate yourself. Know that, set now first, know that Christ being risen from the dead dies no more. No, he ain't going to die no more. He ain't going to that cross no more. Honey, that was once and for all. When he said, Father, it is finished into thy hands. I command my spirit. It's finished. That meant, bless God, I plan of salvation. The plan of salvation, you can't add to it. You can't take away from it. It's finished once and for all. And for these for me, people say, well, you've got to get saved again. How in the name of God are you going to get saved again? Christ going to go back to the cross and die again for him? Oh, gosh. I got more sense than that. And I ain't the smartest I'm the smartest I'm going to sleep. Knowing this, that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. 
And brother, let me tell you something tonight. I want the devil to know tonight, honey, that death has no more dominion. Sin has no more dominion over us, bless God. Amen. We'll put our faith and trust in the Lord and walk unto his will and not after our own personal will. This verse going on down. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. Now, if you notice what that says right there, that when he died, he died unto sin. The Bible did not say he died in sin. He died unto sin. He died away from sin. Because you see, there was no sin found in the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Because he was God Almighty in flesh. He died unto sin. Now, when a sinner dies, now when you and I die, we die unto sin. But when a sinner dies, he dies in sin. That's different, sir. Unto and sin and in. It's like dying in a hog pen, bless God. You die in a hog pen, you die in a hog pen. But you die in sin, you die in sin. And that's the best way it goes. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not, now listen to me now. Now this is the word of God, children. This is what God means for us as Christians. It ain't our way. It ain't the Burger King way. No, bless God, it's God's way. I learned a long time ago under some strict Bible doctrine and Bible teachers and Bible preaching, praise God, what this Bible meant. Some people ain't like that yet. They say, well, I'm saved. I'm not here to live like I want to. No, bless God, that ain't what God teaches you. <laughs> Let not sin, therefore reign in your mortal body. Brother, you hear what I'm saying tonight. Thank you, Lord. Brother, you know what? Transgression against this Bible, and if that's what's reigning in your life and in your body, you better check up, bless God, and see what's wrong with you. Oh, you say, preacher, you're trying to say I should be perfect. No, I'm saying God's perfect. And if you got God in your life, you want to do the best you can to live like God wants you to and not like the devil wants you to. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That's this body I'm talking right here, and I'm standing here. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. If it reigns there long enough, the next thing you know, you're going to be obeying it. And that's what's wrong with so many backsliding Christians today. That's where they're at. Sin is still reigning in their mortal body. And they out here trying to fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't know how to do this. I'm laying it out pretty plain tonight. And Lord, that's what God gives to us. Neither yield ye your members as instruments unto. It says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sins. But yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. In other words, let's yield our members, our, our mouth, That's our thinking, our arms, our feet, our body. Yield it to the things of God. And the way we do that is read the word of God, learn the word of God, and then you know which way you should walk. Amen. And you should know which way you should talk. And you should know which way you should think. See, if you go around with evil thoughts in your mind all the time, that's about what's going to come out of being careful, right? Exactly. For sin shall not. Now, come on now, 14th verse. Y'all underline this. Y'all underline the whole chapter. <laughs> For sin shall not have dominion over you. Amen. Now, brothers, you know what that means? That means that we are not and should not and will not, by the grace of God, be a slave to sin. Amen. If you're a slave to sin and you can't get away from it, then the devil is your papa. You need to get away from God. Amen. For uh -huh. well, sin shall not have dominion over Bobby Blackman over you as a church, a Christian. You say, preacher, why aren't you preaching a perfect life tonight? No, I'm preaching a perfect Savior. Exactly. And I'm also preaching, praise God, if you're saved by the grace of God, you only have a desire to know what First John 1 and 9 is. We make a we make a boo-boo. We make a falter because God said we sin every day of our life. Not willingly, but we do, because God says, for well, man or woman, that's what it means. 
from, from somebody to know it to do good and to do it to not is sin. See, they ain't no getting by. You might get by the preacher, you might get by your brother and sister, you might get by with a lot of people, but you're not going to get by with the Word of God. God says, whatsoever a man or woman soweth, that shall you also reap. Exactly. So it's going to come a reaping day one day. So when I believe a true Christian in this church tonight, if you love God, and you're the dedicated Christian, you should be, all of me, or one of me, you should know where 1 John 1 and 9 is in that Bible. Because God said, if we confess our sins to Jesus, He's faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the Bible says in the next few words, He that saith he's without sin is a lie and the truth ain't in him. Now I'm saying, you say, preacher, you're contradicting. Oh, bless God, I ain't contradicting nothing. I'm telling you, if you're saved by the grace of God, you should not have a desire to want to walk in the world and walk in sin. Amen. Because sin is a contrary to the word of God. Sure You love the Lord tonight. Amen. I love my wife. I don't have no desire to go out here and do something to hurt her. Yep. I love his church. I don't have no desire to go out here and do something to hurt his church. Uh -huh. I love my Lord. I don't have no desire to go out here and do something to bring reproach upon his name. Amen. Because every time the devil can get you to do something to bring reproach upon the word of God, or bring reproach upon the Lord, or bring reproach upon his church. The devil's laughing at you and laughing at you in the face of this church. Mm -hmm. I love my church. I love my family. And I sure wouldn't want my wife to leave the house and go up here to some shopping center or some restaurant and somebody say, Hey, she didn't let me say, You know what Bobby was doing here yesterday? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about, Bobby doing there yesterday, because Bobby wasn't there yesterday. Bobby's at home. <laughs> you know, the devil likes to lie on something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's full of them. He's a lie and a follower of them. He, sure if he thinks he can get that much on a Christian. He won't stop till he thinks he's got the bush and loaded down. Mm -hmm. Sorry, brother. <laughs> he's a bush. All right. 14th <coughs> verse. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for <coughs> ye are not under the law, but under grace. Under what law. then? Shall we sin because we're not under grace? the law but under grace God forbid know ye not that whom ye yield yourself servants to obey his servants ye are to whom you obey you hear what I'm saying whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness but God be thanked God be thanked that ye were the service of sin that ye have obeyed from the heart that from the doctrine which was delivered unto you the grace, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ being then made free from sin ye become the service of righteousness brother listen here we, we, here, we live in the world of sin we live in an ungodly world but that don't mean us have to go out here and protect them that's right. I walk in a grocery store. I see uh, liquor bottles. I see beer cans. I see all that mess on the counter. Yeah. But it don't tell me, bless God, I, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, something's leaving me over there. I don't want to. I don't want to. But I, uh, well, a, a case wouldn't hurt. A six pack wouldn't hurt. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you know what you want to start with. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what you want to. Because you see, when God saves you and God delivers you, God gives you grace to walk right by that. Yes, he does. He sure does. And brother, when God delivers you from something, when he saves you, he delivers you from hell to start with. But thank God there's things in this world he delivers you from too. Exactly. Because you don't, he takes that old flesh and desire away from you. Take a while. You've been doing something for years. It take a while. But eventually God says, the trial's over with now. Mm -hmm. The trial's over with now. They'll find something else to try to teach you with. You can't get you one thing. He don't quit now. He don't quit. Mm -hmm. He tries something else. 
But I'm glad that God's grace is sufficient. Yes, Lord. Greater is he that lives on the inside, church, than he that lives on the outside. Under the Spirit of God is the power of the Spirit of God that lives in our heart and soul. Honey, God says you need not man to teach you anything. This same Spirit that lives in your heart when you got saved will lead you into all of God's plans. Praise the Lord, And man don't guide you no more. Need not man to tell you what not to do no more. The same Spirit that come in your soul will tell you what to do right and what wrong. And if you don't have that spiritual radar in your soul, and when you do something wrong, it don't detect it for you. It don't show you. You better check up. Because you see, that's the spirit that lives in my heart. If I do something contrary to this book, or God's will, or God's word, honey, it will grieve the spirit in my heart. And it will grieve the spirit in your heart if you say it. Know ye not, 16 verse, that whom ye yield yourself service to obey, the service you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto the righteous. But God be thankful that ye were the service of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart uh, that from the doctrine which was delivered unto you, being then made free from sin, ye become the service of righteous. I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmities of your flesh. Y'all know what that means? Bless the Lord. The infirmities of your flesh. Amen. That's when this stinking flesh wants to cry out and do something contrary against the will of God. Amen. But greater is he that's in there saying, no, it ain't. No, you ain't going to have your way. You've got to talk to the flesh. You've got to talk to that devil that lives in this flesh. Sure enough. Oh, yeah, honey. That devil's still right there in that flesh. And he'll try to talk to you and try to get you to obey the lust of the flesh. Oh, that's wrong. Well, nobody knows about it. Yeah. After all, well, uh, but yet, God knows about it. Yes, sir. You know, I was sitting up at a restaurant one time, and these two guys were sitting there, and they didn't see me when I walked in and sat down. Well, one of them didn't know me that good, but the other knew me well. And he had his back to them. And he was sitting there, and he was using all kinds of ungodly language. And he sat there and turned around and looked, Oh, Brother Bobby, I didn't know you were sitting there. <laughs> Well, I, I said, well, fella, let me tell you something. There's somebody a whole lot greater than Brother Bobby that Amen. already knows what you said. So it ain't Bobby that's going to judge you one day. It's God Almighty. Mm -hmm. See, these people are more scared of preachers yep. than they are of Holy God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Brother, listen here. I learned a long time ago God's what saved me. God's what's going to take me to heaven. Brother, I ain't got to fear what man can do. I fear what God can do. Amen. Man can only destroy this body, but God can destroy soul and body in hell. Amen. You ain't saved. But you do it. It's your own choice. Hmm. Why, as you have yielded your members' service of unrighteousness and unto iniquity, unto iniquity, even now, even so now, yield your members' Service of right, uh, to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were a uh, service of sin, you were free from righteousness. And we walked in a sinful world, and we lived in a sinful way of living, and we were walking as sinners. Honey, we had no, we were, we was far away from righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. But when God saved you, you come out of that situation into the world of righteousness. Yeah. I love to go to church. I love to hear the word of God. I love to hear the good gospel singing. I, because it's my spirit and soul that feeds on that. For the 21st verse. What fruit have ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Bless God, I want to tell you something, church. If you've got to get out here away from this church and you're doing something and you're trying to hover down and hide it, and you say, oh, I'm afraid. Oh, what will happen if we get caught? Well, what kind of joy, Mother said? What kind of joy is that to have? You got him do things that you know you're ashamed of. I wouldn't even have a dog, this guy. Uh, uh -huh. I'm proud of my dogs, cats, uh -huh. birds. I'm proud of what we got. But if I had a dog and I was ashamed of him, I'd give him to John. And that's yeah. a brain of <laughs> <laughs> No, 
child, what fruit do you have when those things were off you now ashamed of? For the end of those things is life. Did that say life or did that say death? For the end of those things is death. God says, now the next, I'm going to read the 26th, 23rd verse here. And this ain't the 23rd verse of Psalms either. This is the 23rd verse of this chapter 6. Let me get to 22nd in that. It says, but now being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have the fruits of holiness and the end everlasting life. For the 23rd verse, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friend, death has a payday. Sin has a payday. Sin will kill you. Sin is like a, a very poison viper. It's like a poison rattlesnake. It'll kill you. And I'll tell you, church, don't flirt with it. Don't play with it. I don't, I don't know why God gave me this message here or not, but he did. Don't play with sin. Don't flirt with it. Because it will bite you. And when it bites you, it don't bite you to play with you. It bites you to take you out of here. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Preacher, I appreciate the word of God. I love the word of God. Amen. But preacher, I need your prayers too. I believe we could all shake that hand. We all need each other's prayers. Let's pray for each other. And love each other. And forgive each other. It's God, for Christ's sake, just forgive us. But let's don't play with sin. Don't flirt with it. When you see sin, do it just like you do a rattlesnake. If you don't kill it, do a lot based from it and go just as far away from it as you can. Brother Marsh dismisses. Don't forget to serve his Sunday morning at 945. Pray that you'll be here. Bring a friend, bring a visitor, bring somebody with you. So no other message before then. All right, Brother Marsh dismisses. Father, before we come to you today, Father, Father, we thank the Lord today, Father, for his precious word today, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the strength that we receive through your word, Father. Lord, help us always be obedient to thy will, Father, and thy word, Father. Lord, help us always live according to thy word, Father. And I pray, Father, you bless all our brothers and sisters, Father. And take us all home safely, Father. And bring us all back to this morning time, Father. Jesus, have a great day. Thanks. Good night. God bless everybody. Amen.